All right, guys, it's Thomas here. So uh, I'm here at Jay's place. We're continuing our f- <laughs> 12 a.m. Uh, <laughs> podcast or slash, you know, talk. Oh, my goodness. So uh, there's one topic I want to cover before I go today, and that's synergy. What I realized by reading my comment section is that there are a lot of people who don't know about synergy. Uh, th- they have this impression that, you know, you just have to go buy the best of the, the best speaker that's reviewed, uh, the best amp that's reviewed, just pick them all, put them together, and it's going to be fantastic sounding. That's actually not true. From my experience, playing with gears, a lot of gears, synergy is actually very difficult to get. So maybe we can start by defining what is synergy. This is difficult because if you Google it, what is synergy for stereo, you're going to have a lot of different answers. If that's the case, then how can we talk about synergy when we have a problem defining synergy? All right. So Jay, do you have an idea? There's no right or wrong answer. Okay. This is just well, our I, way I of defining it. Know, I didn't even know there were multiple meanings for synergy. You did, mm-hmm. you did your research. Yes, I did. Um, I just, I'm just came in, coming into this. So I'll just give you my definition of synergy, I guess, yeah, yeah. of what I know. Yeah. Well, synergy is basically um, the, um, the, the marrying of mm-hmm. um, whatever is in your system, speaker, amplifier, DAC, uh, whatever it is, mm-hmm. and put into it, um, it can sound wonderful together. Mm-hmm. Like, wow. That's fantastic, right? Mm-hmm. And you would often call that, you know, a beautiful match. Okay. Right. Uh, whereas, you know, you may put in something that's well reviewed, mm-hmm. you know, very, very good in other systems. Yeah. Put it into your system, plug it in, and it just sounds terrible. Okay. And you're like, what's going on? That's mm-hmm. not what I synergy. That that's when we call a synergy problem. Okay. So it's a, it's like it's like you know having a pretty girl, mm-hmm. right? And Okay, and, and, let's see where and, this goes. <laughs> yeah, it's like having a pretty girl and, you know, cooking is, you know, very important for you, right? And, well, she doesn't cook. Right? All right, all right, all right, all right. Versus, mm-hmm. you know, eh, she's okay, mm-hmm. but then, wow, she cooks really, really well. Okay. And that's very important for me in a marriage, right? Mm-hmm. So, there you go, that kind of thing. All right, that's an interesting I'm not way saying of put it. Not, not for me, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> to make it clear, not for me, just I'm just saying an uh, example, okay? So, yeah. All right, so um, to add on to that then, uh, the way I define synergy is this. There is good match and there's synergy. It's just, uh, okay, good match is that when you, uh, let's, for example, let's take a, a warm sounding speaker. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. match with a cold, well, a lean sounding amplifier because it balances it out. It balances out, yeah. That's good match. That's generally the rule. But synergy for me is a little bit more than that. It's that when you combine all those elements, the DAC, the preamp, amp, and speaker, it levels up one extra level. Like it goes super saiyan on you. Yeah. yeah. Meaning, right? It's like, shucks, I didn't know my speakers have so, so you, much so, bass. So you're saying it's, pre- it's pretty mm-hmm. and good cook. Ah, there right? you that's go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. There so you go. Oh, yeah, there yes. you go, yeah. Right? So synergy is difficult to get, and and <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is, Thomas. <laughs> yes, and uh, a good example, well, for me at least, is like when my friends drop by, they might go like, "Whoa, I didn't know that your spe- this speaker can be so transparent." Mm-hmm. Meaning that I heard it many times, mm-hmm. but with this setup, holy cow, the sound stage is, I've never heard it like this. Yeah, because. It has good synergy. That's how I defined it. Yeah. What do you think, Jay? Do you think? No, I totally agree. Sense? I totally yeah. agree. Um, now, mm-hmm. a, a good synergy mm-hmm. um, spawns from a good match. Yes. Uh, that's how I see it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're definitely right. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how I would define it. So I think we're on the same page on that one. Correct. So um, how do you achieve synergy? That is difficult. Now, that is very, very difficult. And uh, the reason it's difficult is because mm-hmm. it comes from experience. For example, um, a sensitive speaker like the Tecton or JBL may sound beautiful with um, a tube amplifier. Mm-hmm. And you know, uh, a certain tube amplifier may sound better with a Tecton than JBL. Okay. And so vice versa. And you know, we may be more synergist- uh, synergistic, a good okay. match. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have a situation where a really well-reviewed solid state amplifier may sound terrible on these sensitive speakers. Okay. So that's the hard part. So okay. now you have to play around, around with it. You have to hear a mm-hmm. lot to achieve synerg- synergy. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just, this is an example of just amplifier and speaker. Yeah. Think about DAC, yes. preamp, 
cables. Cables. <laughs> with, with, with a question mark. Uh, turn turntables. Um, yes. uh, stylus. Yeah. Um, you know, cartridge, tone arm. That mm-hmm. would, let's not even get into turntables, but that's the thing. It's um, it's but a whole other topic. I, I won't say okay for uh, people who are new to this uh, hobby, mm-hmm. like don't be discouraged about it. Like I know we're making it sound very complicated, but there's certain guidelines to it, right? Why would they be discouraged? Because trying to get good synergy is very difficult. It is. It requires you experience. Mm-hmm. It requires you resources. Resources because you need, for example, multiple amps mm-hmm. to try. Mm-hmm. So that's why it can be discouraging. Um, I think it's exciting. <laughs> sure, if you have uh, if you have a lot of friends who have yeah. a lot of gear, yes, it can be exciting. Yeah. So there's guidelines on how to achieve a synergistic system. Mm-hmm. But however. This is not going to be very popular. What I'm going to just say yeah. to get amazing synergy requires a bit of luck. Yeah, yeah. Well, th- again, that goes to trial, trial and error. Yeah. Okay, so let's take uh, my own reference system. My system, you know, I, I sell and buy a lot of gears. I change a lot of my gears. Okay, yeah, yeah. but there's one speaker that has been sitting at my home for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Okay, it is the Earthquake Titan mm-hmm. t- Tigris. Now. This speaker has a lot of problems, a lot, okay? First of all, it's uncontrolled bass. Second, it has no mid-range, okay? Third, uh, it's very tall, so the soundstage is very tall. That sounds terrible, Thomas. Why do yes. you keep that thing around? <laughs> yeah, it's 12 grand, that speaker, okay? And cut it, cut it, cut it, it down. <laughs> it, it is just horrible. And okay. uh, we, we call it the party speaker. Okay. okay, that's what what it is. Okay. It will shake your house. Yeah, right. The bass is just out of control. Okay, but I figure a way to make it sound so good. Mm-hmm. So you achieve synergy with it. I was able to tame it, but mm-hmm. the synergy part came was the last puzzle. Okay, mm-hmm. so I know that this speaker. Okay, so let's just use this as an example how you achieve synergy. Okay, so you know that you have a very fat sounding speaker. Mm-hmm. You know that it has a lot of bass uncontrolled bass. Mm-hmm. So therefore, the front end, what I needed to do was map uh, pair with something that controls very well the bass, mm-hmm. lean sounding. So I went class D. Okay, so I got the bel cantos for it. But the problem with the bel canto is that it's a bit dry. Yep. So I have to preamp the amp with it. And the Titan, the top end, does not sparkle too well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It uses a soft dome super tweeter. Mm-hmm. So to solve that problem, I got myself Siltec cables yeah because they're silver cables mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it tilts up the so so yeah. so if you guys haven't guessed um mm-hmm. it stems from educational guests mm-hmm. um but if you already you know probably guessed because thomas has heard a lot of these stuff before uh he knows right mm-hmm. or, or through reviews whatever you know he, he knows that siltec is gonna do that yeah. you no know, this amplifier is gonna do this and then that's how he um goes towards synergy Right. So I, I worked my way that way. Yeah. But the one element that changed everything, you see, even mm-hmm. with that setup, yeah. my friends still feel like, eh, it's okay, or whatever, yeah, you know? But it's, you're working towards it, right? Yes. So, no, so now tell us what was the final puzzle. The final puzzle was this CD player. Okay. With tubes built into it. There you go. A little bit of, of uh, tube <laughs> magic. Yes. Sparkle. Yes. And uh, when I put that in, mm-hmm. I remember my friends there that day, and they said, Thomas, you can stop upgrading. You're done. Mm-hmm. This is it. Because synergy has been achieved. It, yep. it just levels up the whole system. Yeah. Unfortunately, that CD player worked for one day and died on me. I'm serious. God, that's it was a twelve, terrible. It was a $12,000 Musical Paradise CD player. Musical Paradise, if you're watching <laughs> this, uh, send him. <laughs> it worked for one day. I bought it used, but uh, it's a long story. My and I, I tried to have it fixed by Many people yeah. cannot fix it, mm-hmm. and I can never achieve that synergy again, ever. So that's why that speaker is just sitting somewhere in my house right now until I find the right gear to make it sing again. But the key here is that when you achieve synergy, that moment where it changes all your friends' idea about that speaker, you know that you've de- you done well. Where they tell you, that's it, Thomas, you can stop. So. That, that story was very, very... Uh, 
depressing. <laughs> 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 so let me give you an example of um, one of my systems that I achieved synergy. Uh, for me, mm -hmm. I thought it, it achieved like almost perfect synergy, something something so perfect that you no, know, I thought I'm done. Okay, and, sure. And um, that was with my JBL L300 speakers. Mm -hmm. Now people, are, now I sold my main system mm -hmm. so, to fund this review channel. Mm -hmm. So now people are gonna be like, "Wow! So you sold your main system mm -hmm. when your chief synergy used to?" Be. But you have to realize, I achieved that synergy already. So when I have, uh, you know, built up more money, I can get that back. I, 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 I know what goes into the system exactly the way it is. Oh, that's so, interesting. So, so that's you know. When you need the money, you gotta do what you, you gotta do. But anyways, um, point aside, so it was a JBL L300 speakers, and yep. I love those speakers. It's horn design, oh, mid-range horn loaded design mm -hmm. with a horn loaded tweeter and uh, a 15 inch huge woofer. Now the problem with the speaker was, there's so many problems with the speaker actually, okay. uh, Thomas. Yes. Um, and that is because it, the mid-range and high frequency extension is amazing, but the 15 inch woofer, it, there's no bass. <laughs> Uh, okay, can I understand. You, can I understand. You imagine yes. um, when you get this big ass speaker to your place, right? Mm -hmm. And as a young audiophile, right? Mm -hmm. This speaker is older than I am. Uh, I hooked it up to um, to a uh, what did I have? Meitner MA1. Sorry, not Meitner. I had Meitner monoblocks. Okay. Um, uh, MTR101 monoblocks. Okay. And I hooked it up, and I thought, where the hell is the bass? Uh, but I, you, I understand completely where yeah, it's coming yeah, yeah. from. Yeah. But, but you see it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, where is the base? It's a 15 inch woofer. Sure. Two of them, right? In each cabinet. Yes. Oh, beautiful mid range, beautiful vocal, high frequency extension, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Where is the base? Mm -hmm. I was scratching my head. I thought the woofer was broken. In mm -hmm. fact, I, I uh, sent a person a, a text message, whoever I bought it from, saying, <laughs> Is this broken? <laughs> Okay, yeah. And the guy said, what are you running it with? And he gave me a few guidelines, so thank you for that. Um, and so I started my journey of finding the right amplifier for it, because mm -hmm. the guy said, you need a right amplifier for it. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, what, what were you running with again? The Meitner uh, Monoblocks, MTR 101. How many watts? It was a solid state. I believe there are 200 watts per channel. It should be enough, no? Okay, I keep Here, going. Here's the thing. All here's right. the thing. Um, so I got two amplifiers, because reading the forums, people are like, yeah, you know, sensitive JBL horn loaded speakers, they gotta be run with tube amplifiers. All right. So I got the um, Kerry um, SLA 80. That's uh, a good, very good. And I had a running with a pretty cheap preamplifier. I don't even okay. remember the name, um, but uh, <laughs> everything sounded so dark sounding. Now there was bass, now there was bass, there was bass. <laughs> but there was no high frequency. <laughs> All right, let me get this right. Uh, <laughs> a, a tube amplifier gave you bass while a 200 watt solid state did not give you bass. Yeah. Reminds me of the Zoo actually. Yeah. The Zoo uh, with tube, it, it gave bass, strangely. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going like, what is going on? Right. I went through, no joke, about 30, 30 35 amplifiers. Mm -hmm. Sounds like me, okay, go on. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and I ended up with uh, Macintosh. And oh. now this is where we get a lot of hate because <laughs> not a lot of people are Which a um, MC30 and 60. And so mm -hmm. here's the thing. Um, people were like, some people were saying, MC, they were swearing that the MC30 sounds better. Okay. The, and um, there was, these, are, these are Macintosh monoblocks. Um, these were you know, made in the days where Macintosh tube amplifiers were very well known. Mm -hmm. um, arguably, these tube amplifiers were what made Macintosh today the reputable brand. I got them both because I want, I, need, I needed to AB it. Because mm -hmm. it was so, like 50% will say, yeah, you know, the, the MC30 sounds better. And 50% will say uh, the MC60 is better. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what? I have to hear it for myself. Okay. So I popped both. Okay. Um, um, I can't eat. Man, you must be. Eat, you must have, have eaten a lot of instant I'm, noodles. I'm so thin. Help me. <laughs> I eat a lot of instant noodle, and Just I'm not joking up. about this. If you see our previous videos, I'm not talk, I'm not joking when I say you know I say by eating eating instant noodles. Um, and so so I I got the MC sixties and thirties and A beat it. Yes. I liked the MC thirties better. Sure. Some okay. people will highly disagree. My coworker will highly disagree. Sure. He thinks the MC60 sounds way better on the JBLs, and he, okay. he liked it. But I, I really like the MC, uh, MC30s. You know, the, the more you're telling me this story, the more discouraging it is. You know that, right? Yes, it's yes, like, yes. No, I'm just saying, th this, is, this is the type of thing um, that you will 
go through. It's not like you reach achieve. What if, I mean, if it was so easy to achieve synergy, yeah, right. It's nobody will be in this hobby. <laughs> Sure. You know, just, the moral of the story: eat a lot of instant noodles. Sorry, get, <laughs> get <laughs> getting to the point. I went to the carry preamplifier. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, I will link to the model. Um, it was DMC six hundred. It's an all-in-one DAC CD and and a pre preamplifier as well. Okay. And so it's a music server. It was a current uh, carry, quite frankly. Okay. And that had bass. Okay. Oh my god! And it had high frequency extension. It's interesting. Eh? From one amp to another. Mm. JBL has bass and no bass. Yeah, right? but, but the thing is, the, the the I loved the sound of the um, MC30s. Yeah. Um, um, but there was just the source was a problem at the time. I was running with Meitner and a separate mm -hmm. preamplifier Macintosh, right? So um, by changing that component, I actually simplified my system. Plus, it achieved synergy, at least in my opinion, and um, it was the best I've heard the JBL L300 with. Wow. So that's the story of my first synergy. That's, that, that's actually the first synergy I've ever I achieved see. perfectly, in my opinion. And when I say perfectly, you know, I don't say that often, you know, it's very hard to achieve. Um, Especially now that I look at all the system he has in the house. I mean, yeah, it's, 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 again, it's a very hard thing because when we review a speaker, we don't just review with that one amplifier. Mm -hmm. um, I actually borrow amplifiers and I'll ask my friends to lend me amplifiers. If I don't have any, um, I go to stores, rent amplifiers, you know, and so on and so forth to yeah. compare different amplifiers to see, you know, what varies well together so I can include in my reviews. But again, uh, synergy is a whole different topic than, you know, matching. Yeah, I mean, that reminds me, right? Uh, in the other video, I was mentioning about Polk 707, yeah. right? You have, you, I hear from people saying that they sound fantastic and some people saying it sounds meh. Yeah. Uh, as I said, it's, a, it's about synergy, yeah. right? Can you get it to sound fantastic? Now, I think, Tom, is the uh, one thing that um, a lot of people, the uh, high-end audio, I'm mm -hmm. a little bit careful about saying this, mm -hmm. um, but if I think it will add value, so I will say it, mm -hmm. um, is that when people say, eh, sounds meh, right? Mm -hmm. what, what are you running it with? We don't know, mm -hmm. right? What are you running it with? Um, I've, I've often not had people um, uh, that wanted to buy, now, I sold my JBL all 300 yeah. but I didn't sell it to anyone that just wanted it. Mm -hmm. I sold it to someone who had an idea of, uh, you know, having these kind of components, you know, was going to feed something good into it. Mm -hmm. um, I had people, plenty of people that wanted it because I was suddenly okay. kind of blowing it out. Yeah. And so I had people that wanted to run it with uh, Moran's receivers. Mm -hmm. I said, no, you're not running it with that. Okay. Not because, you know, I'm an asshole. It's because, you know, he's just not going to be happy with it. And I know because I've done mm -hmm. it. You know, it's not he's not gonna be happy with it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he's better off to, you know, with another speaker yeah. that's a little bit more merrier to the Marantz, right? So, okay. so there's, 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 there's a difference between, you know, um, having different preference mm -hmm. and just hooking it up into something that just, just doesn't work. All right, so I guess we'll wrap it up at this point. Now, although we were talking about Synergy tonight, okay, we talk about, you know, matching, let's say, uh, bright speakers with dark amps, you know, you try to balance it out. One thing I learned, okay, you never know until you plug it in. Yeah. Okay. You can think that if I have a bright amp, bright speaker, bright DAC, bright, 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 you put them all together, it might be neutral sounding. Yeah. You, you, you just don't know until you plug it in. All right. So, Jay, what is the takeaway from today's video? So, the takeaway from today's video, as we just discussed, <laughs> okay, <laughs> is that um, really, you really shouldn't underestimate synergy. Um, it's not about buying the best, you know, reviewed um, DAC amplifier and so on and so forth. Um, it's not about your friends telling you that this is the best amplifier you should go and buy it. Uh, you should never underestimate Synergy. Yeah, and, and I would just uh, end it with, um, you know, I, I was lucky that at the beginning of my audiophile journey, I have friends who taught me the importance of Synergy. Uh, for, for me, if, uh, you know, if that's one advice I can give to newcomers is that you need to understand equipment matching is more important than buying like the best equipment of whatever category. And yeah, I, I think that's my uh, big takeaway. And luckily I, I learned that very early. So I, I saved myself a lot of money. All right. So with that, guys, I'll see you next time. Next time.